Several years ago, Jordan Peterson sat down on a panel with William Lane Craig and the topic of morality came up with William Lane Craig pushing back on Jordan Peterson that you cannot come to the conclusions that he has about morality and objective truth with regards to just a naturalistic point of view, a point of view that morality evolved from evolution. And so it is very interesting how they engage on this conversation, the pushback that William Lake Craig gives Jordan Peterson respectfully and Ultimately, what this could mean for people who are watching from the sidelines and watching this journey that Jordan Peterson is having with moving closer and closer to what seems to be a relationship with Jesus. All right, so we're going to be jumping into this clip. I got to send a big shout out to Daily Dose of Wisdom. This is who I originally saw do a reaction of this, and I was like, man, this is so good. I have to react to it. Well, I was very heartened, Jordan, by your affirmation of the objectivity of moral values and duties. You said there are things that are unquestionably good and unquestionably evil, that these moral values are not things that are invented, but they are discovered. And I couldn't agree more. And I would want to push you on this to say that this very consideration ought to help you to move through naturalism and beyond naturalism to a transcendent ground for the objectivity of these moral values and duties. So William Lane Craig, brilliant apologist, is currently a petition to get him on the Joe Rogan podcast. And he's saying, I appreciate that, man, you are acknowledging that there's an objectivity to right and wrong. Yet he's saying that this should move you further along towards theism, okay? And towards understanding that this comes from a transcendence that is outside of us, that there's an objective standard that goes beyond us, all right? Because they won't be found in naturalism. The naturalist is trapped in the lower story. That's right. Objective moral values and duties are not physical entities described by the laws of nature. Mm -hmm. These are transcendent realities, either platonic uh, or else grounded in God. Um, and therefore, the very affirmation of the objectivity of moral values and duties that was so strong throughout your talk, uh, which I so appreciate, it's, it's anti-relativistic, mm -hmm. it's objectivistic. I want Anti-relativistic, what is he talking about? He is talking about Postmodernism, postmodernism does not believe in objective absolute truth. It thinks that everything is relative, the truth is relative, and that, that, that's what he means by anti-relativistic. I want to encourage you to push through that naturalism to finding a transcendent ground for these in theism. I think that's the most plausible Amen. moral theory that will enable us to affirm Amen. the objectivity of these moral values and duties. I've tried to work out the sorts of ideas that I portrayed in this talk today within a naturalistic framework as much as possible mm -hmm. oh, for, for, because the naturalistic technique is so powerful, n not least for that, but also because there's glimmerings in the scientific literature of the sorts of ideas that you portrayed when you mentioned that the evolutionary biologists are increasingly making the claim that morality is a biological adaptation. And I think you can make a very strong case for that, a much stronger case than has actually been made so far. I think there is a, a, a very sophisticated ethic that has evolved that we recognize as a consequence of the evolution of our cognitive and emotional structures. I think that that recognition manifests itself in admiration. You know, people are very imitative. It's one of the things that characterizes us in contradistinction to animals who are not very imitative. It's probably the precondition for our linguistic capacity. Things that characterize this human existence is the capacity to spontaneously pick a model for emulation, right? A model for admiration. And that's the manifestation of that moral instinct. You say, well, to admire is to want to copy. Say, well, what do you want to copy? Well, you want to copy that which is most admirable. Mm. What is most admirable? Mm. Well, what is most admirable, that starts to become a, that starts to become a transcendent question. Mm. Right? You, you can imagine that the, the, the local examples of what's admirable, they're right in front of you, and, and, and they're concrete and tangible. But to abstract out from that, that which is admirable in and of itself is simultaneously to construct something like the representation of a transcendent good. And that's, to some degree, how religious conceptions emerge from their underlying biological substrate. Now, you might say, well, that's merely reducing the religious conceptualization, the religious abstraction of what's good to the biological substrate. And I think you can read it that way, but I don't think that that necessarily indicates what it is. I think that mm. the entire process of evolution is somehow shaping itself around maybe platonic ideas, something like that, some transcendent good. And that it's a mistake to assume that just because you can make an association between the transcendent abstract good and the process of evolution, that one is necessarily reducible to another. In it fact, isn't the way reality that be works. To commit? the genetic fallacy, to try to say that because one's moral beliefs originated through such a biological evolutionary process, that therefore they are explained away 
and have no objective validity. That that just is to convert well, Yeah, well, I think partly point. what happens too is that you, you, at that level of analysis, you have to start questioning your initial presumptions, like the idea that the most true truth is objective. Because I so he's saying if you go down the, the rabbit hole of naturalism, evolution, you start having to ask what is even objective. How could you even get something objective It's if it's just came through evolution and came through us looking at each other, right? And if it's not from some sort of transcendent being, right? So it's really interesting to hear him say this. Truth is objective because I'm not sure it is. I don't think we understand what constitutes truth very well. And there's the truth that you act out as well as the truth that tells you what the world is made of. And those aren't necessarily the same thing. And so things get very murky at that level of abstraction. But one thing I have learned from attempting to reduce religious preconceptions to their biological substrate is that there's always something left over that you haven't explained. And it's, it's not something trivial because every time I look into what's left over, it turns out to be unutterably deep. Yeah, well, like the origin of the universe, right? We saw Joe Rogan who said all of science hinges on explaining away how the everything came to be if you give it one single miracle, right? Which is how did the universe begin, right? And so this, this it's, it's interesting that he, he points to that get rid of some more of it and the rest becomes unutterably deep i absolutely love this moment where so this is this is a daily dose of wisdom um shout out to him i want to uh hear his thoughts on this and then i'll add some more thoughts he, he does a great job here dr peterson admits that what he is attempting to do is to reduce religious preconceptions to their biological substrates meaning he's looking for a way of naturalistically explaining the things that we know can be spiritually proven things like morality right. things like human rights and i right. love this moment because you see him admitting that it doesn't actually work that there's a level of depth there's a reality that I would call, and I think you know, all Christians would call a spiritual reality That's right. that actually sits beneath the the biology, the natural world. It's, there's a deeper reality, and Jordan, right. Jordan Peterson is at in this moment. I think through this discussion with with William Lane Craig, beginning to admit that there are limitations to science. There's limitations to naturalism, to observation as a mechanism That's for right. arriving at truth. That there's actually deeper truth than that which only exists in the physical world. So it's very cool to see. Good on uh, William Lane Craig, and good on Dr. Peterson as well for being willing to change his mind. He's still on the he's still on the trajectory. We don't know where he is with Jesus, but it does seem like perhaps that's the moment that Jordan Peterson becomes a theist, acknowledges that there is a God that you can't just explain everything with naturalism, because that's a that's a few years ago. So this is this is uh, I would say at least three or four years ago before the pandemic. We see according to the Bible that prayer is extremely important in terms of us being transformed from the inside out when we get aligned with God's will. For the Christians watching this channel, I want you guys to implement these spiritual disciplines in your day-to-day -day life. And the only way I've been able to do this consistently is through writing down my prayers in a prayer journal that does a few things. One, it allows me to reflect and come to God humbly and ask him to move on my behalf. And two, it allows me to document my prayers, which ultimately helped me remember the very things that I was praying for and see the hand of God tangibly in my life when he answers them. So I would urge you, consider writing down your prayers. It could be in a blank notebook. It could even be on your phone. Or you could check out the one I personally designed and used for my own quiet time and spiritual discipline that I think will be a huge blessing. It's the exact structure and system that I've used for years to pray and be more consistent in my spiritual disciplines. You can pick yours up today by clicking the link in the pinned comment below. All right, I'll see you over there. Peace.